Hello and welcome to a quick demonstration of automated tenant provisioning with Windows Azure Pack and Service Management Automation. My name is Charles Joy. I'm a Senior Program Manager on the Whiskey Cat team. In this demonstration, we will illustrate a fully automated tenant provisioning scenario from two different personas, the Service Admin and the Tenant Admin. In fact, as we are already on the Tenant Admin portal, we will start out as a Tenant Admin, log in, and subscribe to an existing plan. This plan offers the tenant admin the option for a fully deployed collaboration environment, including AD, SQL, Link, Exchange, and SharePoint. In fact, before it deploys the VM roles for these workloads, it creates an isolated VM network. All this and the plan is enabled for notifications throughout the process. So as we see the screen refresh, the tenant portal is already updated with the isolated VM network and is currently provisioning the Active Directory VM role. The next step in the automation is to provision the SQL VM role. And then shortly after that, the VM roles for Link, Exchange, and SharePoint. Each of these can be provisioned all at the same time. While this automation does improve the overall deployment wait time, I'm not one for waiting around, especially during a demo. So let's speed this process up a bit. Ah, there we go. Obviously, I sped the entire process up, including AD and SQL. But as I said, just by automating VM role deployment, not manually entering data or waiting for one thing to finish before starting another, we see tremendous improvement in overall environment deployment duration. Oh, and remember those notifications? Well, here are just a couple to show you what's possible. Now let's head over to the service admin portal and take a look at some of the things that made this all possible. There are a lot of moving parts on this admin side that made that automated tenant provisioning possible. I'm going to go through each one of them, but not in very much detail. So here we are in the all items view. And the first thing we want to dive into is VM clouds. And actually, everything stems from VM clouds as its relationship you know, to the plans and the automation. So let's go to VM clouds, gallery. And here I want to show you the gallery items that were available for us to deploy. Now, normally these would be available to the tenant per plan and they can click on it and configure them and deploy. Well, we were automating stuff, so we just really need to make sure that the gallery items that we want to automate are in this list and then obviously subsequently available to the plan that we're automating against related to the subscription. So, gallery items here, Exchange, Link, SharePoint, uh, Domain Controller, Active Directory, and then SQL. All of them obviously were available. So, thing we want to jump to next is the plan because then we relate the plan to the VM cloud. So we'll go to plans. We see I have many plans here. The one we chose and the one that we're interested in is collaboration workloads. Click there. And then we want to look at the plan service for virtual machine clouds. We can see that it's hooked to my, my VMM stamp. And then a particular cloud happens to be tenant cloud. Usage limit, we didn't set any specifics no specific network or hardware profile templates. We're not worried about any of that. We're really concerned about the gallery for this plan. And these are the gallery items, VM roles that are available to the plan. And thus, people can either manually deploy or we could automate. And there's nothing else specific in this. So we're just going to back out of here. Just wanted to show you how that relates. Now, to start the relationship to automation, we go back up to VM clouds. And you saw, briefly probably, that there was an automation tab up here as well. What does that mean? Well, let's click on it. This allows us to configure when specific events trigger, we can relate them directly to the running of a runbook. So let's take a look at the one that we're most interested in, subscription create. So I'll hit edit there. You can see the object that you know for the event that we chose was subscription. The action was if a tenant subscribes to a plan or creates a subscription, what runbook do we want to initiate? Well, subscription create dispatcher. There's others you could choose from. In fact, it's completely configurable and you can do whatever you want as long as you tag it with SPF. But the one we want is the subscription create dispatcher. Because if any subscription is created, this runbook will trigger. So we wanted to make sure we handle the data. And you'll see that in a second when we go and look at that runbook. So let's do that now. So automation is where the runbooks live. This is SMA. Go to runbooks. And then we're looking for Subscription Create Dispatcher. Here it is. We're going to go to click on Author. And this is sort of grayscale because we can't edit it in here. So I'll go to Draft and actually edit it so it gets more colorful. 
for demonstration purposes. And we'll take a look. So there's some input parameters, and basically these handle the data coming from the SPF event, and we leverage that throughout. Now I'm gonna, not going to dig in deep here. Um, there's blog posts for that. But I'm going to scroll down to the if statement that relates to us. And you can see there's another if statement here that just handles plans in general, gold, silver, bronze. Hey, you have this. We, we create a tenant, net, or tenant virtual network for you and then send an email. Hey, you selected this plan sort of thing. But the one we care about is here, the collaboration workloads plan, as we saw earlier. It's hooked to the tenant cloud. Now I could get this information dynamically, but I know this is the space I'm working in, is the tenant cloud. And that's really for you know some of the other commands that we execute. So first thing we do, create that tenant network. You saw that pop in. Even before we refreshed, it was available. That's how quick things happen. We send an email saying, hey, you're part of this plan. I do output some stuff to the screen just in SMA. That's not required. And then we go about deploying the environment. First is Active Directory. And once Active Directory is done, we do SQL. And then once SQL is done, we can concurrently deploy Exchange, Link, and SharePoint. And you know your mileage will vary based on your environment and your speeds and things like that. But we set up the monitors and the notifications so we know when we can initiate and we don't have to put weights in there and, and stuff like that. So it will monitor. So I'm just going to back out of here. I'm going to discard draft there. And uh, so that's the automation bit. So what other things might be useful in this admin side? Well, we looked at plans, automation. We looked at VM clouds. And uh, that's really where it's at for IaaS. Let's take a look at user accounts to, to round this out. So we'll go to user accounts, go to my user account, go to subscriptions. We can see here once this loads what I have for that subscription. I'm using six, six cores, four gig of RAM, 480 gig of storage, and I have six virtual machines. So now if we wanted to go look at my tenant as opposed to here I am as the service admin. So let me change personas real quick. Go over here to my tenant portal. Ah, here we are. So you can see it said six VMs. And you might be, hey, you only deployed five. Well, I have done a test uh, deployment of a VM role since then. So you know that's why there's six. But you can see Exchange, SharePoint, Link, SQL, Active Directory, all provisioned. There's that tenant network. So you know it's all there. So we've basically taken you through you know, from the tenant side, hey, I'm going to subscribe to this plan, and this plan says it's going to, you know, basically provision me everything. We watched a provision, we took a look at the behind the scenes, and now we're back here, and I'm ready to use my infrastructure. So I guess that's it. Thank you very much for watching.